Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. The word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday from Paul's resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 to 26, where Paul said, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put everything under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. My dear friends in Christ, Hope really is what the life of a Christian is kind of all about when you think about it. Hope for this life, the hope that we have knowing that Jesus is our Savior, knowing that we have him with us throughout the course of our lives, that means even as we live in a sinful world, we can live in hope, but we also hope for the life to come. And the hope that we have for the life to come, that's something that's amazing because what we hope for is beyond our imagination. It will be so wonderful. And the fact that we can look forward to that, it's because Christ was raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep is what Paul says here. Christ went to the cross. He suffered and died. He paid for our sins, but he didn't stay in the grave. He's the first fruits from the dead. He rose from the dead. He has a glorified body and he'll never face death ever again. And, and through faith in him, we can look forward to that as well. Through faith, what we could say is we're going to live forever, of course. Well, he says here that death comes through a man well, that's through Adam. He brought sin into the world. Resurrection, the resurrection of the dead, that comes also through a man, but that's through the God-man, through Jesus, through everything that he did for us as he went to the cross, as he suffered and died, as he paid for our sins. Well, what Adam did with his fall into sin is he causes all of us to sin. And Christ, also his work has a universal effect because here his death on the cross pays for the sins of all and as a result of his paying for the sins of all well what's going to happen on the last day is all the dead believers and unbelievers will be raised back to life of course believers will be blessed with a glorified body when we're raised from the dead but Paul says then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, the last enemy to de be destroyed is death. The end will come. What he's talking about is after all of the dead have been raised back to life, then, well, for us believers, this sinful world and all of its effects and all of its problems, they're going to be gone forever. And he says here, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. When all the dead are raised, then all his enemies taken care of. Now, Christ did completely pay for our sins at the cross. His work was completely finished there. But with his resurrection from the dead, with the resurrection of all the dead, that is, 
then what will be the case is that Christ's work is completely finished. When death is done, when death no longer can hold its power over us anymore, then Christ will have destroyed, it says, all dominion, authority, and power, referring to all the forces of Satan, sin, temptation, death's power completely destroyed, Satan's power completely destroyed, won't be able to affect or trouble us ever again. And then he talks about Jesus handing the king over, kingdom over to God the Father. And it's as if what Jesus is going to be doing at that point in time, after Judgment Day, and when all of the dead are raised, well, then it's as if Jesus is going to be saying to God the Father, now it's time for us and all who believe in me to really celebrate, to really celebrate. Now, right now, we can and we should celebrate. We should think about Christ's Easter victory and we should be filled with joy. We should be overjoyed as the disciples were when they saw the Lord on that Easter Sunday evening. We should be overjoyed. Christ did pay for our sins. He did win for us heaven. However, we're still living in a sinful world. And that means that its problems, its troubles, viruses and everything, they're still around us and they're going to be around us until Judgment Day, when Jesus raises all the dead and death and sickness, sorrow, sin and everything is destroyed. When Christ comes and does that, then it'll be time for us to really celebrate. No more sickness, sorrow, pain, death, temptation ever again. We'll be able to celebrate forever. Today, I was able to watch my first Milwaukee Brewers baseball game, at least part of a game this year. And as is the case with the beginning of a new season, of course, what I'm hoping for is that, that our, my Milwaukee Brewers will be able to have a great season and will be able to win the World Series come this fall. I hope that every year. But as I say that, I wonder, might even be the case if I asked you right now, who won the last World Series, the World Series in the fall of 2020? I'm sure there are some of you that would know right offhand, but some of you would have to do a bit of thinking and maybe you'd even have to search online or something in order to figure it out. It was the Los Angeles Dodgers that did win last year. But actually now they're kind of former champions. I suppose they're champions until a new World Series winner is, is, is crowned champion again. But actually, in a sense, as we're in a new season, they're not the champions anymore. Everybody's trying to be the new champion. My point here, as I say that, is that Think about what Easter and Christ's victory really means for us. In Christ, we are eternal World Series winners or eternal Super Bowl champions. And that victory can never be taken away from us. We get to celebrate that championship in Christ forever. Because of Christ, death has been defeated and we'll be able to really celebrate when Jesus raises all the dead and takes us and all believers to heaven to be with him forever. But, but doesn't that mean that we can really celebrate even now? Amen.
let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, even though we still live in a sinful world and are faced with its problems and troubles, we're still champions in Christ, even now through faith in our Savior. Help us always to remember our victory in Christ and to really celebrate now and forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.